So to get things going here, you guys all know RC four wheel drive released a new um, TF two trail one twenty four scale TF two. Um, they're calling it a CNC aluminum chassis set, but it has plastic Punisher shafts, which I think is kind of weak. Uh, they also have, I'm going to change the screen a bit here. Let's go this way. With it. There we go. I also think the body style is quite nice. Uh, you are going to be able to put, uh, headlights and stuff in the front. It's all hard body shell. It's coming in three colors, yellow, blue, and red. Now, I don't know if you can tell by looking at it, but it is a molded plastic. The molded plastic on the yellow in particular, you can see through it with the when the picture's in the light. So it's pretty crazy. Um, plastic Punisher shafts. I really don't know why they would have done that. At the price point that they're making these things, I really think they should have gone above plastic myself. Uh, D44 plastic complete axles and 124 scales. So it's kind of a little bit similar look as the 110 scales as close as they can do it. R6 micro transmission, which is a very low profile. Um, the way the transmission sits in here is quite low profile. <coughs> Spring dampers, like everybody else, so there's no oil in these suckers, uh, which is, in my opinion, another disappointment. I'm not hearing a lot of great things about uh, power-wise on these things so far from what I've seen. Um, spring dampers. Oh, super scale 0.7 inch wheels. Now your cars, the, like all the SEX 24s and all the other 24s are running one inch bead locks right now. These are running 0.7 inch. <coughs> That's less than three quarters of an inch. That is small, like crazy small. Who else is making tires and wheels that size? <gasps> Nobody. Why? Why, why? Why would you do this? I don't know. It's just RC four-wheel drive. It's kind of just like with their 1.9s, their 1.7s, and their 1.55s. You're getting all of these sizes that not many people are making, particularly the 1.7s. Um, let's get on to the next part of this here. So power-wise, all the reviews I've seen on them so far, they're not really getting great reviews. Um, they are, <laughs> they're just, it's crazily underpowered. Uh, they're supposed to be coming with another motor option in the box that you can swap out, but it's not a whole lot better from what everybody has been saying or, or talking about so far. So I don't know. I, I really think they kind of missed the mark a bit myself, but that's just me. Is it scale? Yep. Does it look cool? Yep. Is it uh, going to perform and make you, is it going to do the same stuff the SCX24 can do? No. But, you yeah, guys are probably wondering what this is. In 2019, June of 2019, RC Four Wheel Drive released this platform. Now, this platform, oh, there's my battery discharged. This platform was actually designed um, by a third party company. And they were not owned by RC Four Wheel Drive. They were just being distributed and sold by RC Four Wheel Drive. But if you look at this platform, the chassis was all metal. The axles were all metal. Uh, it had more power to it. It had a 4.1 to 1 gear ratio, CNC machined aluminum chassis. Uh, and then they discontinued it. It was a really cool little chassis. So um so that's it for 124 scale new stuff the next thing we got right now is ap plastics has released a chevrolet el camino 1970 clear body shell uh this is set up to fit a drifter style chassis i believe it's uh wheelbase here is 259 millimeters i think it's a pretty nice looking body myself uh i did notice in the pictures and all the images that you look out of it it is the uh, the mold lines where the doors are are deep, very deep. Like even if you just take a look at this picture here, <coughs> when you're looking in there, you can notice around the doors. I think the back of the door. I also think the door is a little too short, but uh, they're just where the seam would be, where the door would open. It's very deep. 
Uh, it is 195 millimeters wide. So we're talking fits right in between that 190, 200. It'd be kind of cool to throw a little bit of flared out wind uh, wheel wells on there. It'd be kind of cool. It comes with uh, light buckets for the front and rear, uh, all the body detailing decals, uh, and all the masking decals and everything that you would need for painting. As you can see in here, the grill and the front bumper actually have to be cut and attached separately. I don't see anything in here explaining. Nope. Nothing in here stating whether or not there's any kind of double-sided tape provided or anything for using them, for attaching. So, I don't know. There you go. Um, through, so that is the new body from AP Plastics, uh, which I think is kind of a nice looking one. And then we have Friction. So Friction's been making shocks, and uh, I've got a set of them on one of my crawlers, and I think they're pretty smooth. They seem to be working really good. Seems to be fairly high quality. They have now decided to come out with the whip, um, LED whip lights. Now, they're the same idea as the ones that were coming out from Pitbull tires. Uh, Pitbull had a set of whips. But these ones, they mount, the light is down in the bottom, and then... In the bottom, you see it here. It's a very small, it's waterproof. It's a very small bulb, and it just shines up through basically a clear tube. Uh, you can get them in. Let me find the colors. You can get them in blue, green, a multicolor, uh, which I believe it just keeps changing colors, orange, red, ultraviolet, which is UV, black light, or straight up white. Um, fully waterproof, two to three S compatible. It's six inches long. You can roll, uh, they're waterproof. You can roll and, and not worry about them bending or you might break it. I doubt it. Um, you're probably going to roll the cab of your truck first. And that's their next little gimmick that they've come up with. And it's Frixion, Frixion RC. Next we have, we have. DSM off-road, crawler-style thumb steering wheels. <coughs> now, DSM has been making, you probably know them for making their recovery kits and such. Uh, the recovery kits and stuff that they're making, they were going good. Everybody's, they still have them. But DSM has now made this uh, crawler-style thumb wheel. And then they make one that fits the Traxxas TQI. The Fly Sky GT5, the Spectrum DX5C, and the Element XP130. So the Element XP130 is the stock radio that comes with any of the Element Gatekeepers, uh, Ecto, Trail Runner, any of this. Basically, it's it's their stock radio, which is super great. Uh, bolts on easy. Uh, reuses the stock wheel foam. So if you guys are noticing there's no foam on these, uh, it will fit the foam off of your stock wheel, slip it on there. I would throw just a dab of uh, tire glue on there or some hairspray just so it doesn't spin around because once you stretch those foams out, they want to slide off pretty easy. Uh, and they are manufactured using the HP MultiJet Fusion process, which is a new version of 3D printing, uh, which makes them stronger than just regular 3D printing. So there's that from DSM Off-Road. We also have from DSM Off-Road. This is the OD Overdrive Microshift Servo Mount made for the Vanquish Phoenix. Uh, there's a bunch of guys with those out here. They're all liking them. And so now you have an option to throw a micro servo in here. Also made out of the injected HP material. Uh, you can fit a Reefs triple or Reefs 99 micro servo in there. Uh, there's some other makes of servos that you can throw in there. Um, you could do the shift servo, the Power HD TR4 shift servo that would work great as well. So there's some other options for shifting servos rather than full size stuff. That stuff is from DSM Off Road. Uh, there will be links on the previous following video for this. Bench talk clips part. We'll uh, clip this all out and you guys can find all the links and everything for this stuff in that video. Let's go to the next thing. 
Next thing will be Club 5 T-Rex for 2021 Bronco upgrades. Now, they're making a fair number of different products. They are a 3D printed product. Uh, you can go on there. They got a front bumper insert, which is fairly nice looking. They also have several different options of um, LED lights. So they got some LED lights that mount up inside the grill. And give it a little bit more of a bright, uh, almost a Raptor-ish kind of look. If you've seen the, the Ford Raptors, how they look. Uh, there's some pictures. This is what comes in the package. So as you can see, it's mainly just a grill. It does come with the white or silver kind of Bronco lettering that you'll input into there uh, and a strip of three LED lights. Now, I haven't seen on there whether or not there's a choice in colors for the lights, but I'm sure some of them will be able to, uh, somebody will get those changed up and change the color up for you. Also from Club 5, they have what they call the pillar lights for the TRX4 Bronco. Now, the pillar lights, these ones are designed, they meet, meet, they mount right up by the mirrors on the Bronco body. Uh, they're quite bright, but you can also get them mounted. They're down on the front bumper as well. So you could have six lights shining forward LEDs to increase your lighting capacity or as you see fit, right? Then we also have, well, there's a picture of what comes in the package. So they are a high intensity LED. Uh, if you can notice, it's a little square patch. They're not a uh, rounded five mil or anything like that. And uh, you get two buckets per set. So they, I believe, plug into your receiver lighting or your receiver output if you got an extra one. Then they also have the lower bumper uh, with another set of LED lights down there. Uh, it also has a, a little bit more realistic set of hooks in there and a little bit more rugged appearance to it. So all in all, you could have uh, this thing blinding you as it's coming towards you at night, and that would be kind of a pain in the ass to try and drive with. But, you know, each to their own. Everybody wants to have light sometimes. I haven't put the new light kit in mine yet. So last week when we were talking with Luke, it was kind of funny that this came up the next following week. Um, T Works has come up with uh, the X-Ray X4 Roll Center and Deer Gap Gear Adapter Spacers. So this is basically a set of uh, spacers that are shimmed at, the, I believe they are one half mil and one mil. I've got the sizes in here. Yes, they come in one mil and half millimeter variants. Uh, and then they have a gear adapter, which is one millimeter thick and comes supplied with three low profile, three by five millimeter screws, which would be that guy. So this is so you can get some of your adjustments and stuff set up and figured out for your on-road racing needs fronts and rears then also for the x4 and a couple of other things vehicles that i've noticed people are talking about wanting to add shims these shims are made out of brass these are made by a fisnia rc and we will have a link in the description not on the live streams description but the next ones now what you notice with these guys is they have little marks on the sides those little marks stand for the size of that shim. So what you're looking at in the picture right now would be there's three vertical marks. Those three vertical marks stand for three. And then the little hash marks beside it, like it almost looks like dashes, that's a half a mil. So these shims right here in the picture are three and a half mil tall. Then we have the next size. There we go. There's a breakdown of how they're working it. So you can see three and a half mil, three mil, two and a half mil, two mil, one and three quarter. So the three quarters is a zigzag, 1.5 and one mil. Made out of brass to help you get some weight, change things around, move them where they want it to be, and such. Pop 
Power HD. You guys are probably wondering why does this servo look like this? This servo looks like this so that it can be mounted into the Mugen MTC2. So Mugen is basically uh, it's an on-road TC platform, which is very similar. Actually, it's the one that a lot of companies, a lot of people think X-Ray based their build off of. And I know last week when we were talking with Luke, uh, it was compared quite often to the Mugen uh, Automatics and everything, getting the center of gravity down low and everything. This has the servo mount actually built into the case. So this servo is specifically made for that platform. Um, obviously, there must have been a desire for it because they made one. And then going from this, we step up to the big mama drummers. 80 kg large scale servo from Power HD. Now, what in the heck would you put one of these suckers into? Well, this one here particularly works for the new SCX6. So you got some bigger high torque choices from other brands other than just Spectrum and your normals. Um, so that's steel gear or titanium gear. I can't remember exactly. I think that's actually a steel gear set. Let's see here. Now here it is. It is gear type, all steel. There we go. Rated torque at 7.4 volts is 75 kg. The torque at 8.4 volts is 80 kg or uh, 1,111 ounce inches of torque. 1,041 ounce inches of torque at 7.4 volts. And if you want to run it at 6 volts, which I don't really know why you would only want to run it at that, it's 60 kg or 833 ounces of torque. So don't stick your finger in there. It's going to break it. All right. Next. Talked about this a couple weeks ago. Futaba. The T10PX from Futaba. Now they've released a whole bunch more information on their website as to what it is, uh, what all the cool stuff is about it. Uh, I'm going to go down a quick little list here of the features on it. Let's see here. Get to the next picture. And wait. That's the backside. It's got a bunch of charging ports and everything. So it's their highest end model. It is going to be the replacement for the 7PX. <clears throat> I'd have, I'd, well, I'm going to say replacement, but I'm not going to guarantee that means that the 7PX is going to go away, but this is going to be their replacement as being the new flagship instead of the 7PX. They're still claiming it to be the lightest in class. Um, supports up to 10 channels, obviously, 10, 10PX. Has a new function on it, which they call, the new function they're calling feeling. And they're saying it feels like it suits each driver. I haven't seen any reviews on this thing yet. I don't know if there are very many people have run this, but they will. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of people doing little reviews and comparisons as opposed to the old radios or even the Sanwa M17s. It uh, says here it can be used as a game controller by adopting a USB external output terminal. So if you're playing uh, VRC Pro, I think it was, uh, you can use it as an actual controller for playing your game, which is kind of a neat idea. Uh, new wheel unit. So the wheel is a different design. APA, APA angler, and trigger have been adopted. Throttle and steering spring replacement mechanism is adopted. <coughs> uh, Multi-position grip rubber. I'm going to see if I get a better picture here. Go back here to this one. There we go. Uh, larger wheel. It does support left hand, uh, left handed specifications. It has a paddle shift lever switch on the bottom switch, three position switch. So there's your paddle shift that you can see on there. Uh, optional lipo battery can be used. Uh, full display, system information, voice. Uh, no, not voice control, but it will tell you and dictate, talk to you in a voice, tell you if your batteries are run low or transmitter issues. Uh, it's got different battery settings, so I'm going to assume you can run 
lipo batteries or life fe uh, lithium iron <laughs> that's the word uh led settings adjuster receiver updates servo updates uh, model deletion so it does support an SD card now also a new function of this is you can specify what type of model it is so if you have crawlers you could set it up as a crawler profile if you have uh, on-road race cars you can set it up as a racer profile if you have drifters you could set it up as a drifter profile uh, it runs with uh, f4g which is the new um, code digital digital encoding i guess you would say uh tfhssr tfhss sfhss and it is mini z compatible uh we'll give you a servo view gives you adjustable throttle modes reverse sub trim endpoints fail safe function acceleration profiles trim and dial settings switch settings uh, condition settings uh, idle up for gas jobs, uh, drive rate, channel limiter, channel settings. In the racing menu, you've got your expo up to 111, your speed, traction control, ABS, engine start, engine cut. And like I said, the new feeling, new function called feeling, which I have no idea what that's going to be. Uh, in the mixing menu, you can mix your steering, your brakes, your gyro, your four-wheel steer, dual ESCs, uh, CPS mixing, which I don't know what that is, tank mixing, which I do believe is tanks, different track sets, I think, program mixing, tilt mixing, uh, telemetry, you have the telemetry system, sensor list, sensor menu, uh, has a timer, wrap list. S bus servo, an ESC link, gyro link. It has a gear ratio table built in. So a whole bunch of stuff that most of us are never going to use. It's all in there. And it looks pretty and it looks cool. And, you know, it's the biggest and bestest from Futaba. So there are some people out there who just must have it. I'm not one of them. I have a sample. Now, the new Futabas are way easier to program than the older ones were, just saying. So, made by RC Maker is the adjustable horizontal rear post template. Now, when we were looking at the X-Ray X4 last week, uh, was, you noticed that the body posts were coming out the back into the rear bumper. This is a new template made by RC Maker so that you can line up and figure out exactly where those body post holes are going to go before you drill them. So uh, it's adjustable. It's made out of carbon fiber. There's a couple pictures of it here. There's one here showing you if it ever starts playing again. La, 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 la. Basically, it sits on the top deck on the back, and you can use it to line up where your holes go and drill them away. Just another handy tool to make it a little easier to get your body lined up and built, set up on there properly for you. For the drifting guys, RevD has come out with a new steering belt crank set and front knuckles. So what this steer crank set is doing, um, they moved it forward about three degrees, horizontal angle, a change of the rods, is minimized and gives you more stable cornering characteristics. Uh, in addition, they mounted the ball stud for the tie rod horizontally. So it gives you accurate adjustment with spacers, which was not possible before. Um, so kind of like they have on a lot of the x-rays in the on-road cars, now you can adjust your Ackerman by spacing out the ball. Uh, do, 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 bell crank, especially in those of you slide rack, especially in slide rack. Blah, blah, blah. So they're claiming this will have lighter and faster response, uh, but it will also benefit you with a slide rack. Uh, and then they also released a new front knuckle. So this is just showing our angle that they changed and they moved it forward a bit by three mil. 
Uh, this would be the steering rack, which shows you how you can adjust it. And these are the new front knuckles. So this was developed with the SG Bell crank set uh, to work really well with it. Uh, ball joints instead of all plastic just gives you more strength. Now, and this one is designed uh, that you can use larger bearings so you get reduced scrub. Also for the drifters, that's Rev D, by the way, if you didn't read it there. Yokomo has released a new lightweight flex main chassis. So this whole chassis is designed to flex, give you a little bit more traction control characteristics based on where you're allowing the flex to happen. A lot of fine tuning for a got a bunch of cars that want to slide. <laughs> so it seems kind of strange. Um, there was a real push for a while there. There seemed to be quite a push for the chassis to be crazy rigid, but now seeing guys seem to be liking the control and feel of it flexing a little bit. Uh, separate suspension mounts to maximize the flex on the chassis so they're no, no longer built in and they're not solid pieces. So they actually use, by being mounted separately, the chassis can flex in between them a bit now. Uh, made out of aluminum and graphite. And it's supposed to be more lightweight than the standard chassis. And you've got a couple of different battery mount positions for it, uh, depending on how, how much weight you want forward and backwards. For the... M chassis, the minis, to me a minis. Uh, yeah, racing has come out with the new big bore M chassis shocks. The cutest, 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 Q U T U S. Yep, that's how it's spelt right there. Uh, comes with all the pieces you need to rebuild an aluminum body, and you are going to have all the advantages of having shiny, shiny big bore shocks. They come in a variety of colors. I saw blue. Blue, black, and bronze, I believe. Uh, different shock pistons for fine tuning. The set also includes a full set of springs, like different set of springs. So you've got soft and medium and hard shock springs in the kit, which is pretty nice. Gives you lots of adjustability. And comes with 300 CST shock oil included in the kit. Um, that's yeah, racing. And then... Uh, you guys have probably heard all enough about these guys from uh, J Concepts already. For the guys who are really liking the monster trucks, monster trucks with the new launch tread pattern. Oh, oh there we go. The new launch tread pattern, which you know, it doesn't really look like anything I've seen on a real full size. But then again, I haven't had a lot of time to watch any monster truck racing. And then they've got a knob tread pattern that they've come out with. Um, I think I have seen something a little bit like this. It was like an ag tire that they were running. But they, yeah, that's just their new 2.6 inch. It would work good on the LMTs. It would work good on any of that platform. And then Trio came out with a 2.6 inch monster truck wheel. Aluminum upgrade beadlock wheels uh this picture is a little blurry i couldn't find a better one to, sh to steal from he <laughs> he 12 mil hex uh but it's an internal beadlock so hopefully it's not a big pain in the ass to put together it'll be very interesting to see two color choices black and silver or green and silver uh you know the green one looks kind of cool but it's going to look really silly if you don't have the green truck so that is what's new in rc this week if you guys have any other things you would like to see there's a few extra things that we did find out about last second uh, like literally last second i know uh Jinsi i charger is putting out a new charger uh, but it's going to have xt 90 ends coming out of it so we'll be finding some more information about that uh, most of the information I get for this lately, we've been getting from uh, online version of RC car action, radio control car action, redrc.net. I've been grabbing information and finding out new products from there. Big Squid RC, 
you guys have ever checked that out, check out Big Squid RC. Harley Designs does Scale News Update on Tuesdays. Uh, usually I have most of that information already figured out, but if I missed anything, he helps me out and ends up I sneak a couple more from them. Then we also get all of our information from our suppliers um, because they'll tell me prior to releasing this, they'll uh, show me what's on there. They'll put it up on their website before you can actually order it. So I can find out a few things that way. That being said, one thing that I did find out about is uh, Axial. Just going to grab it here. We have Axial, FMS, Losi, and Proline are all doing releases tomorrow morning, early in the morning. So pay attention. I'm not really so concerned about the Losi or the FMS, but the Axial release is of interest because I got no information about it whatsoever. It could just be a set of axles. It could just be some weird body trim things. I don't know. Uh, the pro line thing, I already know it's a Chevy truck body. Uh, looks to me like it's got a cage. Couldn't find good images to put on here. So I didn't bother. It'll all be recently released tomorrow. Uh, you'll find out more information from all four of those companies. FMS could possibly be a smaller scale crawler. Uh, but they also do some model planes, so it might be that as well. And that is that for those. 